This is going to be a study on the man Ahijah the Shallow Knight. The prophet Ahijah the Shallow Knight. Maybe we can take some of his good characteristics from his life and apply them to us. In 1 Kings eleven twenty eight and 29, it says, And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shallow Knight found him in the way, and he had clayed himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. So you're going to notice Ahijah's boldness. This is a characteristic of someone who is confident in the truth. In Acts 4.31 it says that when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And then Acts 4.13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And then in Acts 9.27, Paul is said to have spake boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 6.20 says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And the verse before that, in verse 19, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So we know Ahijah is bold because he confronts Jeroboam, who is said to be a mighty man of valor. And verses like Proverbs 28, 1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And in 1 Kings eleven thirty it says, And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. So Ahijah is bold in the Lord so much that he rips off Jeroboam's new outfit and rips it up in twelve pieces. Imagine Shaq or LeBron or Zion Williamson or some UFC fighter walking down the road and some guy just comes up and rips their new outfit in twelve pieces. That's what happened here with Ahijah ripping Jeroboam's new garment. Then in 1 Kings 11, 31, it says, And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. So Ahijah is doing an object lesson here. He gives Jeroboam ten pieces of his garments, because he is going to be over ten tribes, all except Benjamin and Judah. Now verse 32, it says, But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. So notice that Ahijah is not ashamed to preach against the false gods of his day. Like Ashtoreth, Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. Many people have female gods today. Look at the music and you'll see woman worship. You have Ariana Grande even has a song called God is a Woman. A Billy Elish or Elish, however you say her name, the satanic puppet of a singer also calls God a woman. Florida Georgia line gives God-like characteristics to a woman and their song Holy. So you can see that female worship today. And 1 Kings 11.33 says, Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the goddess of the Moabite, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. So Ahijah mentions how they need to walk pleasing in the sight of the Lord and do right in his eyes, just like any good preacher would. Uh, any good prophet would do that. He's taking the Lord's side of in Colossians 1.10, it says that you might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing, 
being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now some time is going to pass, and Abijah, Jeroboam's son, not Ahijah, but Abijah, this is Jeroboam's son, he's, got, he's fallen sick. So in 1 Kings 14, 1 through 3, it says, At that time Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. And get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. And take with thee ten loaves, and cracknels, and a cruse of honey, and go to him, and he shall tell thee what shall become of the child. So notice that when a wicked man gets in trouble, he knows who to turn to. He turns to God's people. He knows who the real people are. He knows that everyone else is fake and they're just out for the things of this world. But 1 Kings 14, 4 says, And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. So Ahijah is old and has lost his sight, but this doesn't mean he has lost his spiritual sight. Because in verse 5 it says, And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus thou shalt say unto her, For it shall be when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman. So the wife of Jeroboam is led by the master of the skies, the devil. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So the devil disguises himself as something else. Pray to the Lord for spiritual discernment, and you will be like Ahijah, who knew who the woman was before he even opened the door, even though she had disguised herself. In verse 6 it says, And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thy wife of Jeroboam. Why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. So the Lord enabled Ahijah to know who she was when he heard the sound of her feet at the door. And Proverbs 6.18 says, The Lord hates feet that be swift and running to mischief. But Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, and now Ahijah is going to get into his very negative message, his very negative sermon to Jeroboam here. In verses 7 and 8 it says, Go tell Jeroboam, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, For as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes. So he's letting Jeroboam know that he is nothing compared to David. Jeroboam's nothing compared to David. And the Lord can compare people to others, but it isn't wise for us to do that. As you know, in Second Corinthians ten twelve, it says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with them that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise, but it's okay for the Lord to compare men because the Lord knows all. He knows their life. He knows what they've done in secret, and he knows that Jeroboam is nothing compared to David. Now verse 9 in First Kings 14 says, But hast done evil, above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made the other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. So notice the problems Jeroboam has. One, it says he did evil above all that were before him, so he didn't learn from the failures of others. Learning from other people's failures is the best teacher because then you don't have to go through it yourself. Number two, he forsook the command to have no other gods before the Lord. Number three, he ran off and left the Lord behind. He was trying to live a life of pleasure without the Lord and pursuing happiness without God. It says he cast the Lord behind his back. How many times have you done that? 
cast the Lord behind your back and look for satisfaction and happiness in the things of the world. Now verse 10, Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. So notice the evil is going to come upon the house of Jeroboam. Ahijah is preaching that the Lord will allow others to suffer because of sins you've committed. It says, He will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall. So the men, he's going to cut them off. Notice it says, As a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. That shows the feelings the Lord has toward Jeroboam. Comparing him to dung. I mean, that's a rough sermon right there. Just as rough as any sermon you've ever heard. He used some pretty hard language and hard speech here. Because Ahijah knows it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. So that's why he said, Thus saith the Lord. You got to watch out for people who uh, don't say, Thus saith the Lord. They'll say, They'll take the King James and they'll say, well, this word really meant this. Imagine if Ahijah did that. Imagine if Ahijah said, this said the Lord, but he really meant to say this. No, he didn't do that. He, he said exactly what the Lord told him to say. And he did it with boldness. Because when you've got the truth and you know it's perfect without error, you have complete boldness in the truth. 1 Kings 14, 11, it says, Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord hath spoken it. And Ahijah just comforted in that because the Lord spoke it. He's confident in that prophecy. So Jeroboam and his house is for the dogs. They're going to be given as dog food and bird food, just like the enemies of God will at the second coming. At the second coming, the fowls are going to come down and devour their flesh. 1 Kings 14, 12 says, Arise thou, therefore, get thee to thine own house, and when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. So Ahijah just tells Jeroboam's wife to go home and says a prophecy that is going to come to pass, and that when her feet enter into the city, the child is going to die. He knew the moment, the exact moment the child would die because he's a true prophet. But there's nothing worse than having a child die. And that is what is about to happen to Jeroboam. And in verse 13 it says, And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. So a wicked lost king will mourn the death of his son. What does that say about people today who willingly have their child killed? The women in the Bible would say, Give me children, else I die. But now women are saying, If I have this child, I'll die, and my life will be over. Uh, they think that having a child would be the worst thing in the world. You see, that's what the Bible would call unnatural affection. It's unnatural for a woman to not want her baby. Uh, if you don't want your baby, <clears throat> then you're worse than this king, this wicked king who's not only a wicked king, but he's a man. There's something weird about a mother who doesn't take care of their kids or doesn't want their kids. That's as unnatural as homosexuality. That's as unnatural as bestiality. That's as unnatural as incest. It's pretty wicked. Now, 1 Kings 14, 14 and 15 says, Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now, for the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. So they made their groves, this is places with trees and the high places where, you know, they would go to make altars and worship their false gods and satanic-like 
religious worship services. And men still do this today in places like Bohemian Grove. Notice they provoked the Lord to anger. This is sinners in the hands of an angry God before Jonathan Edwards was even born. This is what Ahijah is preaching. He's what you would call a hellfire and damnation preacher. He preaches the anger of God. He preaches sinners need to get right. He preaches there's a consequence to sin. He preaches, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that showeth the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. 1 Kings fourteen sixteen, And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin, and who made Israel to sin. So a person can cause others to sin, especially someone with this much influence. It's happening today at an all-time rate. You have uh, these celebrities and people like that who people look up to, and they're just causing more and more sin because evil communication corrupts good manners. And the more influence and the more power and the more fame a person has, the more influence they'll have on the people. Now, 1 Kings fourteen seventeen, And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. And when she came to the thresh, threshold of the door, the child died. So this proves Ahijah is a true prophet of the Lord because what he said did come to pass. It was a negative message. It wasn't an ear-tickling sermon that he preached. But watch out for preachers who only teach a positive message. But that's what people will want today. In 2 Timothy 4, 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. But verse 18, it says, And they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by the hand of his servant, Ahijah the, child, Ahijah the prophet. So Ahijah is a servant. He was not a big shot, so the Lord used him. The Lord is looking for servants. He's not looking for a big shot. And every Christian should see themselves as a servant of the Lord. When you get to the judgment seat of Christ, is the Lord going to say that he spake some things by the hand of his servant and say your name. Just like he said which he spake by the hand of his servant, Ahijah the prophet.